is a wish your heart makes when you're fast to see. Hey there everyone, Paris Christou here from ToonboxStudio.com and thank you for tuning in my fellow Disney fanatics around the world. I dedicate this video to all you Disney fans just like me and uh, it's going to be a two part Disney princess special. In part one I'm going to be drawing the Disney princesses and in part two you'll see me inking and colouring the Disney princesses. Have in mind that I'm going to be drawing the Disney princesses in my own style using my own little trademark techniques that you guys are familiar with me when I'm drawing my own characters, which is really cool. So I'm making this kind of like my own image sort of thing. So without further ado, let's begin. Oh, and also I just want to quickly explain because I'm sure there's going to be new people coming to the to see this like these videos of mine and stuff. Now I'm using a silhouette technique to really block out these silhouettes of each character. And then I'm going to put them all together to make a nice little composition. And then I'm going to sketch on top. Any second now, the sketching part will begin. And um, yeah, all right, time for a bit of a Q&A session when you guys ask the questions and my old Uncle Paris here will answer them as best as I can. All right, so the first question goes to Daz Manbus. Love your art. Thanks, man. Quick question, Bosch. How did you get quick poses to lock in front of your design program? That's genius. I know, right? <laughs> But no, it's not a genius move. I'll tell you what I did. You cannot lock the Quick Poses websites on your software. You cannot do it. What I did behind the scenes is I recorded the Quick Poses website on another monitor and I took the video and whilst I was editing, I added it on top of the sketching video so that you guys can see what I was referencing from. That's pretty much it. I know it's not a genius idea, but hey, not bad idea from your behalf though. It's a good idea. You might as well just go and um, let them know about it. Might be a cool feature. All right, second question goes to Stan, Stan the man. Hello Paris and thank you for your wonderful works. It's useful for all of us. Thanks man, that's sweet. Can you give any tips for better drawing in the interest for non synthetic tablets? I feel it's more difficult to draw drawing with the deport line. Thank you again, you're great. All right, I think I've already answered a similar question to this in the past. Um, right, well, what I used to do, this is what worked with me before I got my hands on a Cintiq. I would trace cartoon characters just so that I can train my hand and my eyes to coordinate together whilst looking at the monitor. Just trace, do it for a while and slowly it will get easier. Trace um, an image on a large scale and also on a very, very small tight scale so that you can learn to draw small details as well. Uh, but yeah, I know it's a little learning curve and it's a bit of an annoying thing to go through but it does get easier through time. All right, next question goes to, let's see, Gar and David. Gar says, why don't you ask the, if the girl singing at the end of the video, I guess, could be the voice of Cherry if she gets animated? Livy from England. Hey, Livy. I take it you're an Olivia. And David says, uh, if Cherry ever gets her own cartoon animated series, I would like to hear the singer of the outro song to be her voice, I think you want to say. Actor, voice, be her voice, I guess. What do you think about that, Paris? Right, I've already got my eyes set on two girls that I know who are very talented and they are actresses. I know that Lana Marie is a very talented singer, but I don't know if she's a great actress. This is a complete different ball game, guys. It's, it's not enough just to have a nice voice. You need to be able to act as well. So yeah, I'll have her in mind though, when if the time ever comes, I'll have her in mind. So yeah. Next question goes to, uh, let's see here, Vin Fox. Vin Fox says, nice work Paris, thank you. I love how you get so much flow into your character's poses. You mentioned that you prefer to draw cartoon animals. So with that in mind, is it possible we might see some Toon Time tutorials for the characters from Zootopia? Yes, I would love it. And you know what, this is what I'm gonna do for you. On the next Toon Time episode, at the end, I will announce the concept and the concept will be for you guys to pick the Zootopian character that you want me to draw on the next Toon Time episode. So it will go down to all you guys to pick which character or characters you would like me to draw. Next question goes to Bert. By the way, I just want to stop right there. Check out Ariel. <laughs> 
Isn't Ariel just adorable? I mean, everyone draws the princesses in their princess outfits. You know, the, the outfit that they wore at the end of the show, at the end of the movie, for one shot. And I thought, why not dress them up in their original outfits? And I thought, the rags would be perfect for Ariel. <laughs> I couldn't stop laughing when I was drawing. It was so much fun. It was so funny. Anyway, I just wanted to throw that one out there. So, all right, next question. Which, which one was it again? La, la, la. Here we go. Bert Letiker. Have you considered bringing Cherry to the newspaper as in comics? Um, no, I would never do that and I'll tell you why. I've got a bit of experience with newspapers and newspapers demand a lot from artists, they really do. And so if you're like a daily comic strip artist, then can you imagine having to think of gags and create them, draw them up, clean them up and everything, have them ready every single day. Even if you're a weekend comic strip artist, it's still a lot of hard work and Cherry is a sophisticated character. Sophisticated in the sense of that she is very time consuming. It's not like the ones you see in the newspapers. That's why all the characters you see in the comic strips in the newspapers are so simplified on purpose so that they can draw them very fast and come up with strips quick. So yeah, no, I will never go down that route, but I will be coming up with some kind of product on other comic strips or you know my own personal stuff for you guys instead of working for someone. But yeah, Next question goes to, let's see, Amy Lee and IDFL. Amy says, Hi Paris, I have been wondering about this for quite a long time. I know this might sound a little bit creepy, but what do you look like? <laughs> I just like knowing what people look like, especially artists. And the same thing IDFL says, are we ever going to see your face? Guys, why the hell do you want to see my ugly face for? Uh, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. It's been four years now I've been on YouTube and you guys have all been wonderful in supporting my channel every week, every week, every week. And uh, so I guess I do owe it to you guys, you know, to maybe. So that's what I'm going to do. I haven't created yet my video for the 100,000 subscriber milestone that I promised I was going to do. So maybe on that video I might do a little guest appearance just to say hi to everyone. And um, yeah, so I'll look forward to doing that. Why not? Why not? All right, I just want to put a pause on the Q and A's, and I'll continue on the next episode. I just want to touch on a little subject. Oh look, there's Tiana, <laughs> my bell Evangeline. Love that movie. Anyways, um, I just want to. I'm going to continue the Q and A on the next episode and um, on part two. I just want to touch on a subject that we spoke about a couple episodes back, when someone asked me, um, "How do you?" Grab, how do you form your own style? And then I got into talking about have, creating your own little trademark. And you know, so when people see your artwork, they know it was done by you. It's very important to have your own trademark. And I think this episode of the Disney Princesses is the perfect example to explain it even clearer. Right. As you can see, all my characters I've drawn right here. A lot of people, when they take my my courses on my website and they they learn the Cherry course and they come back, they come back with with a question which is very common as well. Paris, I've learned to draw Cherry, but I, all I can do is draw Cherry. I can't draw other characters. Well, if you look at all the Disney princesses that I've drawn right now for you, they all actually resemble Cherry. You can say it's Cherry dressed up as Rapunzel, or Cherry dressed up as Belle. You, know, you can see that. It's, it's very simple why. It's because you're seeing my trademark, my style, my brand techniques that I use to draw my characters. So that when you see this picture, even if I didn't show you this video, you'd have known that I created it because you're familiar with this trademark that I've been branding for the past four years, all right? So, when you form your own style, you can create as many characters as you want by just tweaking around features. Now, I'll give you a good example. Take The Simpsons production. The Simpsons. Designers from The Simpsons, they've created hundreds of awesome different characters. But, they all relate. You can see them that they all kind of look alike, right? Because they're using the same techniques on, on the design of every single character. They might have different body shapes, might have different hairstyles, different outfits. But you know that if you see any one of those characters, you know it belongs to the Simpsons production. Same thing with South Park. South Park, they all look alike. They're like twins. You can say they're all brothers and sisters in that show, right? They all look different, but they all look similar at the same time. That's what you call 
a trademark that's a brand the same thing here I'm drawing all these characters you can see that's Belle you can see that's Aurora you can see that's um, Snow White Ariel Elsa and Anna you can tell who's who but that's what I was talking about when it comes down to trademarks it's very important to me to have a trademark so they all have to relate that's how it is and the way to do that guys is just tweaking around things eyes shapes are, you know you can squint them you can make them more round oval shape the combination of expressions between the eyes and the eyebrows the thickness of the lines as well the eyelashes the eyebrows the thickness lip shapes thin long short full you know you can do all those type of things different outfits different hairstyles different colored skin different colored hair all these little things will change the look of the character position of the nose as well even Charlie Brown Snoopy and the Peanuts gang is another great wonderful example they all look alike it relates that's what you call a trademark brand that's what I wanted to do with the Disney princesses as well and have them all you know relate and resemble my style my trademark anyways guys we come up to the end of the video now I'm gonna show you the final image let's right let's see if we can get 1,000 likes on this video subscribe if you're new I'm Paris Christo from toonboxstudio.com and I'll see you on part two bye bye for now thank you for watching our latest video cherry invites you to subscribe to toonbox studio sexy you Original and oh so sweet Where else can you find A pin-up girl to blow your mind Toonbox Studio Toonbox Studio oh, oh. Toonbox Studio Subscribe, like and share and have a good time